Welcome to Student Ministry That Matters. I'm Ben Trueblood, and today I want to talk to you about can't miss communication with parents. <laughs> Communicating with parents is one of the most important jobs that you have as a student pastor. It's also one of the things that can be very frustrating because people don't open their email, people don't come to meetings. At least these are the things that are said to me frequently as I talk to many of you student pastors. How in the world do I get parents to receive the communication? Well, one of the things I want to talk about today is the way that we communicate and how important that is. I want to give you four things to think about in your communication with parents that I believe will help that communica communication rate to increase. See, some of the things that we do are to communicate in the way that we want to communicate. Now, that's a totally normal thing. You talk a certain way, you write a certain way, and you want to communicate a certain way. But one of the keys of communication is thinking about the way that the person you're communicating to, how they want to be communicated with. And that's what I want to give you these four things. So you want to communicate to a parent, not in the way you want to communicate, but in the way they want to receive communication. It's very, very important. It's the same thing when preaching. How does your audience want to receive communication? It's the same way when writing, when speak, all of those things. So as we think about that, here are four things that I think you need to consider coming from somebody who has a parent in student ministry and somebody who has spent a long time talking with student pastors and parents about how they want to be communicated with. Number one is frequently. Can't overstate this enough. Communicate with them frequently because one time, you know this, is just not going to cut it. They are going to need to see that communication, hear that communication from several different avenues many, many times. So email, text group, social media, combine all of them to create a communication plan. So frequently. The next thing is clearly. This is my case to plead with you to read your communications over again before you send them out. Communicating clearly is critical to this process. If you send unclear communication, then your parents are going to listen to your communication less and less. They're going to delete emails. They're going to ignore social media posts. They're going to ignore phone calls and text messages. They're just going to stop listening if you're unclear. So what's the definition of unclear? if they don't think it's clear. So this would be a great opportunity to gather a couple of parents and maybe run some things by them. Ask for evaluation. Am I communicating clearly with you? Because what happens is if a parent receives communication, it's unclear, they're going to contact another parent and say, do you know what this means? If that person doesn't know what it means, those two people are going to contact someone. And if who they contact, if they don't know what it means either, then you have developed a rep reputation for unclear communication. We don't want that to happen. So stop, reread. If there's a parent on staff at your church that has students in the ministry, maybe not every communication, but for a little while, shoot it to them. Have them proofread it. Speak into the process so that you become better at communicating in the way parents want to receive communication. This is also the point where I would stop and say, make sure that that communication is professional. All right, so frequently, clearly, professionally. You speak to students in a way that's different than what you speak to parents, hopefully, than, what, than how you speak with your volunteer leaders. Make sure that your communication is professional, that there's no misspellings, that your grammar is solid, that you are putting forth the impression that you want to make on parents. That goes a long way. There was one time I remember I got called out for this and it stuck with me. And in the moment, I was like, man, this person's a jerk. But as I thought more about it, it really caused me to take a look at how I communicated, specifically from a written perspective. Uh, I was doing a weekly newsletter and I was sending it out and I was making the point that, hey, we've got free donuts coming. And we did that on a frequent basis. And I used shorthand for donut, D-O-N-U-T. Now, you might look at that and you might say, I do that all the time. There's nothing wrong with using the word donut, D-O-N-U-T. And I agree with you. 
But this person walked into my office and sat down and said, hey, you know donut isn't spelled that way, right? And that's exactly the way, that's the way it was said. And I thought, okay, why are we having this conversation right now? There's more important things. And they left. And from then on, D-O-U-G-H-N-U-T is how it landed on the newsletter. Now that may seem like a really small thing, but here's what it did, at least in the mind of that parent, that I don't care enough about detail to spell something correctly. You know, there are a lot of details in student ministry. And if I don't care about the, th that detail, what are the other details that I don't care about? That's what began to build in the mind of this parent as he articulated to me that day why that was a concern. Now, that may seem like a really small thing to you, and in the moment, it seemed like a really small thing to me, but it stuck with me, and the principle stuck with me more than the donut, and that's this. Parents need to see a level of professionalism in our communication that gives them confidence that we can lead and care well for their kids, all right? And the last one, compassionately. Communicate compassionately. Show them through your communication that you're on their team, that it isn't a student ministry against the parents kind of thing, but that you are with them, that, you under, that you're seeking to understand them, that you understand where they're coming from. Assume the best in your communication with them. Use partnership language. And true partnership involves communication. So once again, those four, you wanna communicate frequently, you wanna communicate clearly, you wanna communicate professionally, and you wanna communicate compassionately. When you work on this communication, it will lead to great partnership. Hey, I'd love to hear how you communicate and some of the things that you're thinking as you watch this video, leave that in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out today. And we'll see you next time on Student Ministry That Matters.